Well, this morning we are taking a deeper dive into a problem that is plaguing our country. During Black History Month, we are recognizing the troubles with inherent bias. Yesterday marked one year since Ahmad Arbery was shot and killed by three white men as he was just out for a jog. And joining us now is Clinton Normore. He's the Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion at AT Still, or AT Still University. Uh, Clinton, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You know, I would think in this day and age that most people would not consider themselves outright racist, but there might be inherent biases that uh, many of us uh, have and don't even realize. So how do you identify that? Well, we all have um, unconscious bias or inherent bias, and these are implicit associations which come from, you know, lived experiences, you know, what we were learned as a child growing up, uh, and um, they uh, are the premise for decision making. Well, you know, we just mentioned Ahmaud Arbery and then certainly George Floyd, his case uh, also brought these issues to the forefront. We saw uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and the protests. Do you think the American conscience has changed? Has the mindset changed across this country and how much work more? How much more work do we have yet to do? Well, clearly there is uh, much more work uh, yet to be done. I think the uh, consciousness with regard to understanding that uh, there are uh, some challenges relative to these differences exists, uh, and it's been more uh, heightened as a result of the uh, murder of George Floyd uh, throughout our country. Uh, but there's no question we have a long way to go. Hmm. You know, when you take a look at the issue, it just feels like such a large issue to, for any one individual to wrap their arms around. So what do you think as individuals we can do? What are small things that we can do to help change the consciousness of America? First, we have to uh, really uh, understand that we have uh, biases uh, and, uh, and then reckon, uh, reconcile our biases relative to our everyday decision making. So. Uh, one can utilize uh, a number of resources. One that I like to recommend is the Harvard Implicit Associations Test, which gives you a tremendous amount of information whether or not uh, speaking towards uh, an individual bias. Uh, and from there, uh, we can uh, start to break down uh, our understanding of difference and how we interact uh, in different uh, circumstances and different uh, cultural settings. Uh, so there are two barriers. Uh, one, I believe, is the unawareness of the need uh, to uh, respond to change, unawareness of our biases, uh, the, and the uh, inability uh, to be able to uh, uh, change, uh, to adapt. Um, you know, unawareness is one thing, uh, but the inability is something different. That's more towards the uh, entitlement process or, you know, feeling that uh, our unearned, uh, uh, unearned uh, privileges are a result of, you know, uh, basically putting our boot, pulling our boots up, boots up our bootstrap and, and going to work. Uh, that has some merit, but there's a lot of value. Uh, there is certainly a lot of evidence to suggest that everyone has somebody or something uh, in their path, and more of us have, um, uh, have had um, privilege uh, than not. It seems a self-awareness, uh, first of all, maybe taking a personal inventory starting there. But I have to tell you, Clinton, as a mother myself, I, I have hope for our future generations. What advice would you give to parents to help us maybe help our children further this process along? Well, fortunately, I believe that the younger generation has a better grasp of uh, being able to interact effectively in different cultural settings uh, and willing to break down those stereotypes uh, with dialogue. Uh, the challenge is, as I mentioned earlier, is what we teach our children as they're growing up. Uh, so what we need to do, I think, uh, as young people, as people in general, is be willing to get out of our comfort zone. Uh, we have to uh, see difference, uh, uh, recognize difference, add value to that difference, uh, and be willing to have uh, conversations in, in different social settings uh, to create understanding. But my, be mindful of the fact that we're not there to debate or we're not there to try and change minds. We're simply there to try and understand and appreciate uh, differences. I love that. Understand and appreciate differences. Uh, if we could just take that simple concept and, and spread it around, so to speak, uh, we could make a big difference, especially with our children. Uh, Clinton Normore from A.T. Still University, thanks for having this important conversation with us. Really appreciate it. I enjoy it. Thank you for having me.